Hi, Internet. With Kill Team 2018 getting left in the dust, it's time to unlearn everything, and we mean everything, and learn Kill Team 2. Or 3? Technically? Kill Team 2? Yeah, we'll stick with that. Kill Team 2. There's too much game here to do it all in one video, so we decided to make this a two-parter. This video will focus on the absolute basics of Kill Team and will be particularly helpful to someone just starting out with tabletop wargaming. We'll cover measuring, dice, data cards, building a team and a roster, and finally a general overview of mission structure. In the next video, we'll get into details of the rules and how to actually play the game, as well as walk through the matched play setup sequence. So with that said, time to get stuck in. Let's talk about shapes. The internet loves this, right? Yes. Yes, they do. Moving on. The game has bespoke measuring tools. There's a black triangle on the tool, which means a one inch. There's a white circle indicating two inches, a blue square used to represent three inches, and a red pentagon, which means six inches. Using these shapes is not mandatory. It's pretty easy to convert inches, and it works just fine. But the shapes do become secondhand in no time. Honestly, use whatever terminology works best for you. Measuring happens from the bases of models to the bases of other models or terrain. Measurements within a distance mean that any part of the measuring target must not be further than that distance, while a measurement wholly within a distance means that every part of the target must not be greater than that distance. This game also uses dice. It uses specifically only six-sided dice, or d6s for short. You will see values such as a 4 plus, which means that you roll a d6, and a value of 4 or higher results in a success. You get no more than one reroll per die, no matter how many rolls give you that ability. You must use the value that you get on the reroll. Data cards have been completely overhauled and no longer resemble their equivalent units in Warhammer 40k. Even before you know how to play the game, it's a good idea to have a grasp of what the models even do, or operatives, as they're referred to in Kill Team 2. The first chunk of data is the operative's physical profile. M stands for movement in increments of white circles. Three circle equals six inches. The action point limit, or APL, is the number of points the operative can spend to carry out actions during their activation. We will cover this in more detail later. Group activation, or GA, refers to how many models of this type you must activate back to back. This is for a lot of the fodder or chaff models like basic troopers or tyranid gaunts to help balance horde armies in an alternating activation system. Defense, represented by D on the card, is the number of dice which the operative gets to roll in defense against ranged attacks. Save, or SV, is the success threshold for your defense die. And finally, W, short for wounds, is used to represent the health points or vitality of the operative. Further down on the data card, you get to the weapon profiles. The type, represented by either a crosshairs or cross swords, indicates whether the weapon is a ranged or melee weapon. The name is self-explanatory here. That it is. <laughs> Attacks, though, indicate the number of dice that you will roll whenever an attack is made with this weapon. BS or WS, which stands for Ballistic Skill or Weapon Skill, indicates the success threshold for an attack. Ones are always misses, and sixes are considered critical hits. Damage is the amount of wounds the attack would cause, either for a regular hit or a critical hit. Special rules list keywords that apply to the weapon at all times, while critical hit rules list keywords that apply specifically to critical hits. The abilities tab lists any unique abilities of that operative. Unique actions list additional actions this operative can select from, if any, when activated, including the cost of those actions. And finally, the keywords list indicates which faction and additional tags the model has, which is helpful to have handy when using certain abilities that only affect models with certain keywords. It's helpful to note here that when modifying a dice roll, if the modification makes it worse, the chance of success is decreased. 
a 3-up becomes a 4-up, for example. And the inverse is true for an ability or effect that improves the success of a dice roll. Also, for any abilities or game effects that may modify the APL characteristic of a model, it can only be changed by a net maximum or minimum of 1. You cannot gain or lose more than 1 APL after adding up all the APL modifiers affecting that operative. And one final point. If a model takes enough damage to have less than 50% of its wounds remaining, it is considered injured. An injured operative loses one circle, or two inches, from its movement characteristic. Now, in order to build a kill team, you start off by selecting a faction. These factions are available in the Kill Team Compendium, the Octarius Supplement, and any other future sources that might come out. Once you select your faction, you then select one or two fire teams. Factions like Space Marines and the Orc Commandos only allow you to deploy a team of operatives from a single fire team. But other factions, such as Forge World and Trader Space Marines, allow you to select two. Each fire team you select will have specific requirements as to which data cards you can include in that fire team, how many operatives you can include from each data card, and what war gear you can equip to each operative. A couple things to note. First, you must have exactly one leader model in your kill team. It is a mandatory list building requirement. Second, each fire team you select has one or two archetypes listed in their header. This is relevant to the tactical ops, or secondary objectives, you can choose from in the pregame sequence. More will come on this later. In a competitive setting, you are required to have your models listed in a format called a roster. This is simply a list of all the models with their war gear options selected that you plan to select from when building your fire teams and subsequent complete kill team. A roster can be no more than 20 operatives. They must all share one faction keyword, such as Space Marine or High Fleet, and a single sub-faction keyword, which is not yet part of the game at the time of this recording. We're going to skip ahead in the rulebook at this point, because we find it's better to know why you're doing any of what you're doing on the tabletop before you learn all the actions of how you do it. Let's dive into a general overview of the mission structure. There is a specific sequence you follow for match play, which is the competitive or non-narrative format of the game, with a focus more on balance rather than narrative fluff. It's an excellent format to start with, in our opinion. Don't focus too much on the sequence right now, We'll cover that in depth in our next video. For a mission in the matched play setting, you can either select it at random or choose one that you want to play. This is outlined on page 119 of the core manual. Each battle lasts for four rounds, referred to as turning points. The mission you choose to play will detail what the primary objective is and how to score it, which typically requires you to control an objective and or carry out an action on that objective. Objective control is based on the total APL value of the operatives on one team versus that of the other on the objective. This way, tougher models like two Space Marines with three APL each, a total of six, can outweigh and take control of a point away from two Orc Boys with two APL each, a total of four. In addition to the mission objective, you also select three objectives specifically for your team to accomplish. Remember when we referred to TAC Ops before? These side or secondary objectives are referred to as TAC Ops in this edition. When you select your fire teams, the archetypes listed for the fire teams you select tell you which TAC Ops you can choose from. The TAC Ops are listed on pages 138 through 141 of the core manual. If you are allowed to select multiple fire teams for your kill team, you can choose a single archetype listed for either fire team to be the one to draw from even if it is not listed on both fire teams you field. The way you choose your TAC Ops is not exactly a free choice. When you select your six TAC Ops, you shuffle them together and deal two at a time. From each pair, you decide to retain one and discard the other. After doing this a total of three times, you are left with the three TAC Ops available for you in this mission. The unique kill teams available for this edition such as the Orc Commandos and the Veteran Guardsmen, also have three unique TAC Ops to add to their pool of options. You can score a total of 12 victory points, or VP, from the mission objective, two VP from each TAC Op for a total potential of six, 
and you get two VP just for having every model on your roster painted to a battle-ready standard. Hooray for free points! And that's about it for now. Tune into our next video where we get into the nuts and bolts of how the game is played. 